Fishing New Jersey you can come across a wide variety of species, but not everything you catch belongs here. Invasive species are changing the balance of our local waters and competing with native fish impacting our ecosystem. In today's video, we will take a closer look at the three main invasive species in New Jersey's waters. The Northern Snakehead green crabs, and dead man's fingers. These species have made their way into New Jersey's waters through human activity and are now impacting our fishing communities, recreational anglers, and the balance of ecosystems. Let's look into each one of these invaders to understand where they came from, how they got here, and what they're doing to our local environment. The Northern Snakehead, China Argus. With a long cylinder body, resembling a snake, hence the name. It has sharp teeth, a flattened head, and a dorsal fin running along its back. Its color varies from light brown to a dark blotchy pattern that provides camouflage in murky waters. Unlike most fish, snakeheads can breathe air thanks to a specialized respiratory system. This adaptation allows them to survive on land for short periods, crawling to new water sources using their pectoral fins. These snakeheads are native to and originated from China, Russia, and Korea. How they got here? They are believed to have been introduced through the aquarium trade and live food markets. Some were released intentionally while others escaped from holding ponds or during transport. The first sightings in New Jersey confirmed in the Delaware River Basin in the early 2000s. They have since spread to connected streams, rivers, and lakes. The habitat in New Jersey. These snakeheads prefer shallow, slow-moving freshwater environments like ponds, swamps, creeks, and rivers. There are concerns that they could spread easily to other water systems if not controlled. Snakeheads are apex predators. They have no natural enemies here in New Jersey, allowing them to dominate their habitats. They are ferocious eaters by consuming a wide variety of prey, including native fish species like sunfish, bass, and shad, amphibians like frogs and tadpoles, and crustaceans and insects. By preying on native species, they disrupt the balance of the aquatic food web. This impacts recreational fishing and the biodiversity of local waterways. Snakeheads outcompete native predators like largemouth bass and chain pickerel for food and habitat. It's illegal to possess a live, it's illegal to transport or possess live northern snakehead in New Jersey. If caught, they must be humanely killed immediately. Anglers are encouraged to report sightings to the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. This helps track their spread and manage populations. Green crabs. Carcinus mayonis. They are small but aggressive with a shell up to four inches wide. It has five spines on each side of its eyes and varies in color from green to yellow or red, depending on age and molting stage. They're highly adaptable and capable of surviving in a range of salinities and temperatures. They are native to and originate from Europe and North Africa. They were introduced to North American waters in the 1800s through ballast water in ships. They rapidly spread along the Atlantic coast, including New Jersey, due to their high reproductive rate and adaptability. They're found in coastal estuaries, bays, and tidal marshes, especially along the Jersey shore from Sandy Hook to Cape May. They thrive in rocky, intertidal zones, sandy bottoms, and eelgrass beds. They prey on native shellfish, including clams, oysters, and blue mussels. This causes significant damage to New Jersey's commercial shellfish industry. The green crab competes with native crab species like the blue claw and the mud crab for food and habitat space. They uproot eelgrass beds, which are essential habitats for juvenile fish and invertebrates. This destruction reduces nursery grounds for many native species. New Jersey has no restrictions on harvesting green crabs. This encourages recreational anglers to use them as bait for tatog and striped bass, indirectly helping control their population. Efforts are being made to find commercial uses for these green crabs, including culinary uses in certain markets. This month, our group members are receiving a striped bass rig, perfect for soaking bloodworms, just in time for striped bass season. If you haven't done so already, go subscribe, go join up for this membership. On top of monthly giveaways, access to fishing logs, one-on-one -on -one tips, podcasts, and help along the way that's going to guarantee you catch more fish. Dead Man's Fingers, Codium Fragile Dark green, spongy seaweed with finger-like branches, it has a variety of texture and can grow up to 30 centimeters in length. It attaches to hard surfaces like rocks, 
shellfish beds, and docks, forming dense mats. This seaweed is native to and originated from Asia, Japan, and China. It was first recorded on the East Coast in the 1950s, likely introduced through water taken on board by ships to maintain stability and maneuverability during a voyage, called ballast water, or from imported shellfish. It has spread rapidly due to its ability to reproduce through fragmentation, making it difficult to control. It's found in coastal waters, rocky shores, and shallow marine environments along the New Jersey's coast. It thrives in high-energy environments like tide pools and man-made structures such as piers and boat hulls. It outcompetes native seaweeds by forming dense mats by blocking sunlight needed by other marine plants. It overgrows and smothers native shellfish beds, impacting species like the blue mussels and oysters. It alters underwater ecosystems affecting food chains and reducing biodiversity. There are no regulations on the removal of dead man's fingers, but public awareness and manual removal are encouraged. Anglers and boaters should clean and dry equipment before moving between bodies of water, dispose of any found seaweed on land, far from shorelines to prevent further spread. Invasive species like the northern snakehead, green crabs, and dead man's fingers continue to shape New Jersey's waters, competing with native species and disrupting the balance of our ecosystems. Whether it's through predation, habitat destruction, or out competing local marine life, their impact is undeniable. As anglers of these waters, it's up to us to stay informed and do our part. Reporting sightings, following regulations, and preventing their further spread can help protect the fishing we all enjoy. New Jersey's waters are always changing, but by understanding these invaders, we can help ensure that change doesn't come at the cost of our native species. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give us a like, leave a comment down below, and always hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys. See you in the next one.